Hey everyone, Nick here, and I got a quick and easy video for you today on automation sales. Specifically, I'm gonna show you the starter sales script that I used to use and have used to sell several hundred thousand dollars worth of automations at this point. Um, I've also used an extremely similar approach at One Second Copy, this is my seven figure content writing agency, to sell content deals. And this is just something like extremely simple uh, while also being somewhat counterintuitive, which some people are obviously going to disagree with me on. And so I thought that I'd at least just record a video, walk people through it, and take it from there. So this is going to be a pretty short video. By the end, you're going to know exactly how I sell deals. And if there's enough demand for it, I might actually record my next sales call with the prospect's permission, of course, and potentially put it up online. But we'll see about that. Anywho, if that sounds like something you're interested in, stay tuned and let's get into it. Okay, okay, so I made a Notion document here and I just copied it over from a Google Doc uh, that I've been using for a very long time, like the oldest Google Doc in existence. And, you know, I've done a lot of sales in my time. I used to sell door to door and I've probably went knocked on over, I don't know the math, but it's been several thousand doors and it's security violently throw me out of it. People run me out of their offices screaming. So I've definitely done my time in sales. Uh, but over the course of the time that I, I've sold things, I've sort of changed my whole opinion and my, my paradigm on uh, how to get people to say yes, how to, pe how to get people to give you money. And it goes starkly in contrast to what a lot of people consider like the golden standard. And I'm not saying that my way is necessarily better, but all I'm saying is that my way definitely works for me. And this is how I prefer to sell because it's happier, it's more enjoyable. You don't have those goddamn security guards running after you. Uh, yeah, it's very, very good. So what I'll do over the course of the next couple minutes is just run through uh, this little sales, this little starter sales script that I use. Um, and you know, in reality, my sales script is a little bit more developed. I mean, I don't use a script anymore. I think I've just been through this so many times that like, I understand what to say when, but uh, when I was starting out, you know, I definitely had one. And it was a little bit more developed. I asked a couple of extra questions and that sort of thing, but um, I, I trimmed it down a little bit, maybe 20, 30%, just so that you could apply this to any sort of you know, automation sale business, whether you're doing CRMs or make.com or Zapier or whatever. So. Anywho, let's get into it. Um, at the beginning, I always like to build rapport. Rapport just means make them like you, essentially. Not everybody wants to like the person that they're talking with that is selling them stuff, and you're gonna figure that out pretty quick, uh, depending on the person. But like my, my goal is just to get somebody to crack a smile. Uh, before I actually get into the sales stuff. So a lot of people disagree with me this, uh, disagree with me on this and say, hey Nick, you should stick to transactional types of relationships. You can get way bigger accounts. I prefer to like the people that I work with. Uh, and so I'll always do some type of funny joke. I mean, I'm from Canada and 99% of the time people are like, you're from Canada? And I'm like, yes, I rode my polar bear to work today. You know, meanwhile, I work from home. Just a little silly shit like that. Um, and then the second that they laugh and are Appropriately warmed up, I like to say. The second like the early call jitters are done, because uh, I do all this over like a, a Google Meet usually, I'll transition out with something like, okay, you ready to jump in? And then it's on, the sale begins. So in order to like take control of sales, and this is something I see a lot of novice, uh, you know, entrepreneurs, consultants, salespeople, freelancers, whatever you want to call them, this is what I see a lot of them struggle with. In order to really like win a sale, a lot of the time you have to take control of the conversation. And I don't mean like to do this violently or anything, I just mean pragmatically. Like you have a goal where you want this conversation to go. It's obviously with the prospect saying yes and handing you, you know, hand over fist, giving you a bunch of money. Uh, but you know, if, if you don't lead them there, you know, like as, as a service professional, your job isn't just to build out the thing, it's also just to like walk them through the sales process as well. Uh, and so shifting your, I guess your mental model for what sales is, I think is, is really helpful. And so this is your job. So you need to set the schedule, you need to take them by the head and show them where you're going to be walking them. Uh, and I always do that in three little steps. I'll always say, hey, here's the way that these calls usually go. So I'm not telling them this is how this call is gonna go. But I'm just saying, hey, here's how you know, my consulting calls usually go. Just to you know, imply that like, this is how they usually go, but maybe ours will go a little bit differently. But in reality, it's probably not gonna go any differently. So I'll say, hey, I wanna learn why you reached out or responded to my email or clicked on my ad. One of the most easily asked questions, one of the most easily forgotten questions, and one of the most powerful questions. It's just like, hey, so first I wanna know why you're here, basically, why are we talking right now? Um, I usually say something like, you know, an average business gets dozens of similar emails every day, or there are dozens of other people you could have contacted. 
uh, but you booked a call with me, so I want to know why. And then I want to get into some background of your business, of the project that you're working on, that sort of thing. I'd like to chat some numbers, where you guys are currently at, where you guys want to go. And then finally, if I can help you, I'll tell you how. And then we can also cover next steps, you know, like where do we take this logistically in order to make, uh, make a project happen between us. Is that good? They always say, yeah, that sounds good. And then you go from there. That takes us to step three, which is the why me slash now slash this project. Uh, and this is pretty simple. You basically just ask a couple of additional questions. The first one, I mean, I know it's just one line on this little Notion doc, but this line takes probably like 15 or 20 minutes to get through. This is like the meat and potatoes of the whole call. So why do you decide to book? Like you didn't have to, so what compelled you to you know, reach out to me? Or why, why are we chatting? Or why did you put up the request for proposal on uh, jobs.com or Upwork or something like that? Like, like what made you take that first step? They'll usually tell you all about their problems. Usually they'll give you some context and background about their business as well. Uh, and from there, you know, this is very consulting style sales. If they haven't already given you your goals, uh, their goals rather, then you can ask for their goals right here. So like, okay, well, what are the goals of, of this project? Like, what would you consider a success? That's a very important question as well, because most people don't really define success. They just build the project out, and then when the client is inevitably unhappy, they're like, huh, what did I do wrong? Well, what you did wrong is not defining what the client considers the most important part of the project. And so that's why you ask, what are your goals? You also ask uh, if you've tried anything to get to that goal before. So maybe you've tried another freelancer, you've tried another consultant, or you've tried another agency. It's really important for you to know that because this is an opportunity to set yourself apart from them. And if you don't know that, it can be difficult to like if they say, well, I tried another freelancer, but then they used Zapier and they built this thing out and it just sucked, right? Now you know, okay, client has some bad experiences with Zapier and maybe the way that their old freelancer was doing things. So maybe I should do it a little bit differently. And then the last one is just to get a sense of urgency. I always ask, why now? So what's the purpose that we're doing this today, right? Like, why aren't you doing this in six months? Why didn't you do this six months ago? Like, why today? And a lot of the time it'll be like, well, we have a bunch of extra capital, or we've been ignoring this part of our business until we dealt with all the fires, and now we've dealt with all the fires, and we're ready to move on. This is really important information for you to know, because it starts giving you some budget uh, info. You get to look into the underpinnings of, of what's going on, and, and you also get a sense of how quickly and urgent this is for them, which can help you if you want to pitch immediately, which I'll talk about at the end of this. And then, honestly, like 99% of your work is done. Like you haven't even talked about the specific thing that you're gonna be producing for them and the vast majority of your work is done. I know that sounds crazy, but as long as you're at this point, if the prospect has poured their heart out to you, they've essentially just been pressing on their pain points this whole time about how much they need this done and why they need this done and why it's important that it's somebody good, right? All that's really left is for the cleanup crew to come in. You're just the janitor at this point taking out the trash. And I say that facetiously. Uh, in reality, what you need to do is obviously tell them what you're gonna build them. But uh, yeah, this is the solution step, which I don't think I put a number four in front of. So what I'll always do at this point is I'll say something along the lines of, hey, uh, great, you know, thanks so much for giving me all that information. I think I have enough to propose a reasonable solution here. Do you have any other questions before we dive into that? And this is an opportunity for them to ask me some questions, maybe get to know a little bit more about me. 99% of people don't care about me. They only care about what I can do for them, which is understandable, right? And you would too if you were looking for a freelancer, consultant, or agency to solve your problem. But they'll just say, yeah, um, how exactly does this work? And that's where you essentially start explaining your solution. Now, if you're in automation, you know that these systems are extremely visual. And so a lot of the time, if you're using a no-code tool like Make or Zapier or NADAN or something like that, you're physically dragging and dropping modules. But you can leverage that during the sales call by actually like screen sharing and going onto your make.com, Zapier, N810 account and just showing them some of the automations that you built that are similar. This to me is usually like the moment where I shine and I really get to like flex my skills a little bit. And you know, it's one of the reasons why I think I've had success with this YouTube channel because I'm quite good at it. Uh, but I know some people struggle with this. And you know, if you want to get better at that part where showing off your systems and walking that fine line between humility and being braggadocious, I definitely re uh, recommend that you record a bunch of videos just walking people through your systems while you work. Uh, that'll help you get a lot better at it. But anywho, I usually will screen share. I'll be like, hey, you know what? This is an extremely similar system to a, a one that I built up for a client two weeks ago, and here's what that one looked like. And I will literally go through and explain how this works. And usually by the end of that process, the client is like, wow, this guy really knows how to solve my problem. Um, after which the sale is you know, virtually guaranteed, as long as we align on price and that sort of thing. So I wrote down here that ideally you would have three or four similar systems that you can model your solution from. You don't have to build out the exact system in order to be able to pitch it. Like you don't need experience building that exact same thing out. 
But you do need experience building out something somewhat similar, which is why over the course of my make.com class or YouTube tutorial, whatever you want to call it, I covered a bunch of common systems that clients need help with. So you just have little nuggets that you can draw from and use to like build out the rest of the system. But as long as you have like a, a basic or general flow, you can always just swap out one platform for another. You can do Notion instead of uh, ClickUp if the client is really dead set on Notion or I don't know, like if they're running a slightly different business model, you could just add a few extra columns into your CRM and probably get it pretty close. So that part's important uh, and that's why I did what I did in my course. And then as a rule of thumb, the last thing I'll mention on this part is uh, always do temperature checks. And don't just do temperature checks here, do temperature checks more generally. What a temperature check is in sales is it's basically you just sticking the thermometer up there at, no, <laughs> it's you just asking them, hey, how are things going? Hey, do you like this? Is this something that you vibe with, right? I'll always ask some variation as, of, does that make sense? Uh, is this sort of like what you were looking for? Is there something I might be missing here? Uh, et cetera, et cetera. The whole idea is essentially just, if you're veering out of bounds and the client's like, okay, this shit's pretty boring, a lot of the time they won't tell you. So you need to constantly ask the client, okay, like, is this sort of what you were looking for? And if they say, ah, well, actually, we were sort of looking for something like this, you're like, ah, okay, well, in that case, let me show you this. So it's like, you know, if your ship is sort of veering off harbor, this is just a way for you to like whip out your compass and be like, oh shit, you know, we're going way too far east, now we gotta go west, right? Just a way for you to constantly be on top of things. So yeah, that's the solution. And then once I've done the solution, this is where my sales advice diverges quite heavily from the vast majority of other people's. I usually, well, it depends on the client, but maybe about half the time, I, I won't actually ask for the sale right there. I'll express my interest in working with the client and I'll express my interest in sending them a proposal, but I won't actually sit down and be like, okay, great, time for you to pay me money before we get off this call. Because I find that stuff one, it's very uncomfortable. I mean, let's just be real. It's uncomfortable for you to ask somebody to part with money, whether it's over a sales call or across the seat from them or across the table from them at a coffee shop or whatever. Uh, so I just don't really like doing it. Two, automation projects can be quite difficult to scope. And so as a result, if I propose a price or propose a thing before I've really had a chance to just sit back and think about it, a lot of the time I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot and then the project scope blows up and it ends up just being way more work and time than, than I really should be spending on this and that I pitched for in terms of price. And three, it makes the prospect quite uncomfortable as well. And I don't really want my reputation to be like that sales guy that is going to do anything to get the other person to say yes and give them money before the end of the call. So I'll usually separate this step. I will pitch them and make them really like me on the call and make them be like, man, this Nick guy, he could really solve all my problems, which to be fair, I, I can at this point. And then we'll say something along the lines of, uh, you know, hey, you know, this sounds great. I'm going to need a little bit more time and energy to scope this. Right now, I'm feeling like it's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe $2,000 to $5,000. I want to make sure this is reasonable for you, but I just got to make sure that you know the systems that you proposed here work together and that any system that I'll build for you is going to be maintainable and scalable. So what I'll do here is I'm going to take a couple steps back. I'm going to write up a proposal for you. There'll be everything that you need to know to make this project a success in that proposal, and it'll have a little payment form attached. So if everything checks out, you can just sign and pay right there, and then we can do a kickoff. Does that sound reasonable? Most of the time people are like, hell yeah, that sounds great. And they've sort of, they're sort of relieved, I can tell, that I'm not like hard selling them at the end of the sales call like most other people do. So yeah, that's what I'll do. A lot of people are gonna disagree because a lot of people say, dude, a sales call's worth nothing unless you leave with a yes or a no. But I just think it's impractical and I've just done way too many of those sales at this point in my life for me to really give a shit and wanna keep doing them. Um, you know, and these are usually bigger deals as well. Like we're dealing with software here. We're dealing with like, multi-step projects, sometimes with several phases, sometimes 10, 15, $20,000. Like, you can't really just get like a check by the end of the call like you could if you were selling some dinky little $100 thing, right? Anyway, and then uh, that takes me to the last step, which is objections. Now again, this goes against all popular advice, but I don't really deal with objections that much. Maybe like 10 or 20% of people have some sort of objection and I won't deal with it on a call. Well, I'll usually like answer if they have any objections to the call, but since I'm not pitching them, it's never like, oh, this is too expensive, right? It's usually just like, uh, hey, logistically, how would this work? Which is less of an objection and more of just like a curiosity. But like in terms of objections, I, I usually don't deal with objections on the call because I qualify the lead really well before we even get to this point. Like before we get to this point, the client knows that I'm a subject matter expert uh, I know that they're bought in and I know that they really value who I am and my expertise and you know some of the other projects that I've done. 
And I do this in you know my marketing. Like if I'm doing cold emails, which I'm not really doing as much of anymore, just because YouTube has been successful and a couple of other lead gen sources have been successful. But if I'm doing cold email, um, I will usually you know, send the client over a bunch of information about who I am. Um, I'll sometimes cheekily tell them to Google me and, you know, they'll, they'll do it and all of a sudden they'll be like, oh, this guy has a Google profile, you know. He knows his stuff. He's not just some schmuck on the internet. Uh, so this, this usually helps me quite a bit. But, yeah, as I mentioned, um, I guess the last thing I'll touch on here is there are, there are some situations in which I will just sell the person on the call. These are quite few and far in between. If I've already scoped the project, and if I've done basically this exact same project before, and I know the scope, and I know exactly how this goes, and I'm extremely confident that I could build it out in like a day or something like that, and I know that the client really likes me and would say yes right there, then I, then I will generate the proposal, usually right on the call using my little proposal generator system. This is, this is pretty uncommon though in practice, especially nowadays with my bigger projects. But in those cases, sometimes the client will pay right then and there. And the situations in which that's happened, it's been great because I can usually just get into the kickoff immediately and I don't have to like schedule a kickoff a few days out. So the project's a lot faster. But, you know, as I mentioned, um, in most other instances, I will do a dedicated scoping step and then I will send the proposal right afterwards, usually same day. If you do it like a day or two or three later, sometimes if this is an urgent enough problem, the client will have already, or the prospect will have already gone out and found somebody else to do it. So you wanna minimize that as much as possible, right? Do everything for them within the 24 hours. Anywho, that's my sales process. I hope you guys found that informative and valuable. I'm gonna include a link to this notion in the video description as usual. Uh, I realize this is a little dry because I didn't actually show off any systems or whatever, but I think the right people will find this valuable. If you have any questions or you want me to elucidate or elaborate on any of this, let me know. But otherwise, thanks so much for watching. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below, and I'll hit you guys all up in the next video.